Drive through just about any big city today and you'll see tower cranes. There are at least 100,000 of these heavy lifting behemoths in operation across the globe at any given time. Here in Nashville, Tennessee, they dominate the skyline. They pop up so often, locals joke that tower cranes are the new state flower. Nashville is experiencing unprecedented growth. An average of 109 people move here every day. And so construction is trying to keep up with demand for business and residential space. This is the new 38-story apartment tower being built at 801 Church Street. Here's what it'll look like when completed. It'll offer 350 apartments, and it would be impossible to construct without a tower crane. The first true tower cranes appeared in 1949, when a German named Hans Lieber developed a crane to support post-war efforts to rebuild war-torn cities. Lieber's design featured a rotating tower and horizontal working arm. It had a 360 degree range that made construction work much easier. In the 1970s, crane manufacturers switched from hydraulic to electric power, and gradually, the tower crane evolved into the essential lifting machines we see today. They may look simple, but there are many essential parts to a tower crane. The base support is located, of course, at the bottom of the tower and often attached to a concrete pad on the ground. This is poured many weeks before construction begins, and the base may be attached to a steel grillage or ballasted chassis set on the ground or on top of an existing structure. The tower, also known as the mast, is the vertical element that gives the crane its notable height. This component extends from the ground up, and it supports the other elements like the cab, the hook, and the counterweights. To rise to its maximum height, the crane grows itself one mast section at a time. The crew uses a top climber or climbing frame that fits between the slewing unit and the top of the mast. Hydraulics lift the top section of the crane above this three-sided brace and new sections of the tower are inserted inside. The maximum unsupported height of a typical tower crane is 265 feet or 80 meters. The crane can have a total height much greater than 265 feet if it's tied into the building as the building rises around the crane. The turntable is the part of the crane that allows the arm to rotate. This component uses the same technology seen in wind turbines. And thanks to it, the jib has a broader range of motion. The operator's cab is the box where the operator sits while working with the tower crane. It contains the computer and joysticks as well as the control systems. The jib, also known as the crane's working arm, is the horizontal component sticking out from the top of the tower. This element's purpose is to support and position the load being lifted. The trolley is that piece that moves back and forth across the jib. The hook block serves as the pulley system that allows the hook to travel up and down the tower. The closer the load is positioned to the mast, the more weight the crane can lift safely. The counter jib extends in the opposite direction of the jib and helps the tower crane maintain its balance. Counterweights balance the load of the lift. Without them, the load capacity would have to be significantly lower to maintain stability. Some common counterweight materials include reinforced concrete and steel. You might be wondering, how much does it cost a construction company to use a tower crane? Well, the typical fee for installation and disassembly of a tower crane runs around $60,000. This price includes shipping the crane to the site, renting the mobile crane that's used to assemble the tower crane, and the cost of the crew that handles the assembly. A typical monthly fee for a 150 tall tower crane is approximately $15,000, with an additional charge to rent the climbing frame and extra mast sections. There are three types of tower cranes. The most commonly used is the hammerhead tower crane featuring a fixed horizontal jib and a trolley assembly that travels the length of the jib to position the hook. A luffing jib crane uses a jib that rotates up and down with the hook fixed to the end of the jib. The hook is positioned by luffing the jib up or down, and this type of crane is especially useful on tight job sites. The self-erecting crane. Typically, this type of crane is smaller and will extend its mast and then unfold its jib via hydraulic cylinders permanently fixed to the crane. Now that you know a little bit more about tower cranes, you'll be better able to appreciate how different our city skylines would look without them. It's because of crane engineering and innovation that buildings can reach for the clouds and truly scrape the sky.